I could put on a ring and go to work on my next cruise ship and tell everyone that I have a husband. Hey guys, welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy and today we're gonna to be talking about 10 things that I wish I had known about before starting my cruise ship career. Um, but before we start, I just wanna remind you to click like and subscribe for some more cruise ship content, but let's get started. I have been working on ships for four years and as much as I love my job, there are definitely some things that I wish I had known before starting. So hopefully um, I'm gonna let you know before you start. Number one, beware of the officers, okay? These are usually older men on board, um, you know, and they're, they're higher up on the ranking system, you know? There's like the captain, then there's the officers, then there's the staff, then there's the crew. So officers are really high up. And therefore they get their own cabin, they don't have to share one. Um, they get to eat in like the nice restaurants. They get lot, uh, basically they get lots of perks being an officer. So it's basically like dating a footballer on land. You know, it's the status thing of like, yeah, I'm dating a footballer whatever that means is that oh i'm dating an officer and a lot of people do date officers just for that simple fact of like status but anyway beware because the only way that they have got to officer status is by working on ships for a long time and what do you think they've been doing They've been practicing sweet talking girls, okay? They know exactly what to say to get you where you, what am I saying? They know what to say to get you where they want them. So don't give in to it. And the thing is with these guys, they usually have a wife at home or like a girlfriend at home. But that's the thing with cruise ships is you can make up another life. I mean, I could put on a ring and go to work on my next cruise ship and tell everyone that I have a husband and like no one will be able to prove it. And if they were like, oh, it doesn't say you're engaged in or married on Facebook, I'd be like, he doesn't have Facebook. It's so easy to like make up another life. I mean, you don't do that unless you're like a bit loopy in the head, but these guys do it, you know? They tell these girls like, you're the only one, I really like you, la la la. And then what do you know it? The next thing that girl's heartbroken because she's found out that actually when he said she was the only one, he meant you're the only one on this ship because actually I've got a wife at home and I've got three other girlfriends in different locations. Number two, you are about to embark on a roller coaster of emotions. And what I mean when I say that is in a 24 hour period, you can go from feeling as high as a kite to as low as you've ever been. And I believe the reason for this is because things change so much on cruise ships. I mean, let's say you go to join your ship you have to learn your new job you have to learn the layout of the ship you have to make a load of new friends those three are huge enough and then when you get used to those three things the the person that you've got really friendly with might finish her contract or i know the guy you've been seeing might finish his contract or you might see start seeing someone or your manager might leave and then you know Obviously every manager, this is on land and on ships, but every manager has their own way of doing things. So like on my first contract, I had nine managers. No, that's a lie. I had seven managers. In nine months, I had seven managers. And although my job was the same, every single one of those managers wanted things done like a little bit differently. It's exhausting, it's absolutely exhausting. And I think because there's so much change all the time and you just have to kind of go with the flow, it's, um, yeah, it can play with your emotions and you do, you know, you do go from being really, really high to really low and really high again. And I think that's one of the reasons why cruise ships can be so exhausting because as well as the long hours that you're working, it's emotional, like you go through so many emotions on top of being a girl. But boys, you know, you'll go through loads of emotions as well. Number three, your work life is your social life. There really isn't any difference. And the reason for this is, um, obviously you all live on the same ship. So when you leave work and you maybe go out in the bar, you're gonna go out with the people you work with because it's just a thing on ships. Although you will make friends in other departments, people tend to kind of stick with the people they work with. So like I work in the shops. So when I would go out to the crew bar, 
I would sit in a big group of the like with the people that worked in the shops because obviously you spend all day with them you know you get really close really comfortable with each other really quickly and like I just said because there's so much change on cruise ships if you find something that feels comfortable you're gonna cling to it so you know these people that you spend so much time with they are your new kind of comfort blanket so you do you do stick together which isn't a bad thing but all this means is the two worlds of work and personal life they collide so if you end up having like a personal problem with someone that is sometimes taken into work the same with if you have a work issue that is taken like into your personal life because obviously on land you have physical boundaries like you have the office where you work and the people in that office are professional you know and if you have an issue with them it's probably professional and then you have your home and the pub and i don't know the golf club or whatever and that is your personal life so if you have an issue with anyone from there it's a personal problem but on a cruise ship it makes it really really hard to distinguish but anyway if you want to know more about that i have actually made a video on how to separate personal and professional life on a cruise ship um so i will leave that in the description box down below and you can go and check that out after this video number four cruise ships are hard work and i know you might be thinking well yeah i think that's kind of common knowledge but the reason that they're hard work is because you never you never really switch off like when you have a job on land and you work Monday to Friday and you come home for the weekend, you switch off. Well, most of us do anyway. If we don't work on weekends, it's like, okay, not gonna think about work, just gonna chill. Whereas on a ship, as I said before, your work life is your personal life. So when you're off, you're hanging out with your, you're hanging out with people from work so you do end up talking about work and you know even though it's your time off there might be a a drill or a cabin inspection or an all crew meeting so you're always kind of ready to go just in case something comes up um, and I think that's why at the end of everyone's contract they're knackered because even though you've had time off you haven't actually switched off Number five, you are gonna have the time of your life. I know that I've just, you know, listed some things that you're like, oh my God, but it's it's different when you're in it. But honestly, it's gonna be the best time of your life. Why do you think I've done it for four years and don't intend to quit anytime soon? Um, it's amazing. And I think the reason for that is because it's so intense, although that makes it hard at times, it also makes it unlike anything else. Um, and you know you're in a different place every single day with your friends and you're having a laugh you're laughing all the time and you know because you work so hard with this group of people you create this like bond and it's just amazing and you know although it's hard work and you you know there will be days where you're like oh my god like in any job it's going to be the time of your life and the biggest problem you're going to have is it's addictive if you go to work on a ship it is addictive really truly like the amount of people that have said okay this is my last contract i'm going to quit and then i'm like oh you're back on ships i thought you were going to quit that's that's me number six working on cruise ships is going to change you for the better um but yeah you are definitely going to see some changes in your personality so for one like you will definitely become more ruthless um and that's not just after one contract that's maybe after a few contracts the reason is because you have to say goodbye so much so on my first contract i mean i would cry when the captain left and i didn't even really know the captain well um you know so you can imagine what i was like when a friend left or someone i was really close to i was an absolute mess but it gets exhausting because people leave people come and go all the time so if you're gonna have an emotional breakdown every time someone leaves yeah it's it's gonna be hard um so you just kind of get used to it and the thing is like if you want to stay in contact with someone you will stay in contact you know and it's unfortunate that some people you know they're just there for a season or whatever the saying is for a reason for a season anyway um 
but yeah you will keep in contact with who you want to keep in contact with so now i very rarely like shed a tear unless it's someone who i really care about um and even then I've just become more ruthless. I think you just get used to saying goodbye or see you later to people. Your social skills will improve dramatically because you have to, you know, maybe I look like I live in a little town. So before I worked on cruise ships, I had only really spoken to English people who are from a small town. Whereas, you know, you go on a cruise ship and you're speaking to people from all over the world, different religions, different cultures, like different, tasting food you know things that i thought were fine they find really rude or things that i find rude they find fine um and being able to communicate with all those people it just it improves your social skills social skills are like anything practice makes perfect and after you've worked on ships for a bit your social skills are gonna be perfect you're more straight talking um I was the master of beating around the bush um, to try and like protect people's feelings or not come across as harsh or whatever. Whereas now, you know, obviously I never want to hurt anyone's feelings, but I'm definitely, I'm gonna just say it how it is and hope that you're okay with that. Um, because you don't have time on ships to beat around the bush. So I feel like everyone who works on cruise, not everyone, but a lot of people who work on cruise ships are just more to the point. And you will become less two-faced. Um, and I'm not saying that I was like this two-faced bitch before I went on cruise ships. But the thing is with ships, news travels like wildfire. People know you've said something before you've said it. So, you know, I might, I might work with a girl called Sally. And Sally has, I don't know, done something to upset me at work. She's done something like professional that I'm not happy with. So instead of saying to Sally, look, you know, I'm really not a fan of what you did. Can you not do that again? I'll go to Stacy, Sally, Stacey, um, and just be like, oh my God, like Sally did this. It's so annoying. Blah, 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 blah. And then before you know it, that little complaint about something she did turns into... I don't know, maybe a dig about her character or whatever. You know how it is sometimes. But the problem is, Sally is going to find out that you've said that. Sally will always find out. And then you have the really awkward situation where Sally's like, did you say this about me? And you're like, I'm such a twat. Yes, I did. And I should. why didn't I just say it to your face? So now, as you can probably tell, I'm straightforward and not too faced because it's you know like anything what does that what does being too faced actually achieve because if you have a problem with someone and you don't tell them that it's a problem they don't know to fix it but anyway so those are the things that is how you will change for the better that is how i've changed for the better <laughs> number seven you're probably going to put on a little weight now before you're like oh my god it's fine it's normal really the reasons are because in the mess which is the crew eating area i have a video on the mess i'll link it down below if you want to know more about the mess but anyway in the mess it is hard to find healthy options and also like i mean you might just have more self-control than me so good for you but like if i've worked a really long shift and i'm absolutely starving and i go to the mess for my lunch break my eyes are generally bigger than my belly and because it's like a buffet style, you can have as much or as little as you want. So portion control is a really good thing to get on top of before you start work on a cruise ship. Now also, um, as well as like eating in the mess, you're gonna be going out in port in new countries. You're gonna wanna try new cuisines. Um, after work, you might be going to the crew bar and socializing, which probably means you're gonna be drinking maybe wine or whatever. And then also like we buy snacks for the cabin, you know? So yeah, when you go out in port, you might buy some chocolate or some crisps to eat in your cabin. And then, you know, you finish work at 11 o'clock at night and you've had a really bad day and Maybe if you're an emotional eater like me, you go back to your cabin and eat the whole tub of Pringles that was supposed to last you a month. Don't buy food for your cabin. Like, I've learned that that is where I go really, really wrong. So yes, you will probably put on a little weight, but it's absolutely fine. 
don't kind of stress too much about it. But also, don't buy food for your cabin. You don't need snacks in your cabin. If they're there, you'll eat them. So just don't buy them. Number eight, the internet is rubbish and expensive on cruise ships. Ah, uh, yeah. So I have never ever been on a cruise ship where the internet's good. It might be like cheaper on some cruise lines, um, but it's still very iffy. I mean, it's it's good enough to like send a text or WhatsApp or do a bit of Instagram, but like it's not the best. So what I would suggest is if you end up going on a cruise ship that is staying in like one region, um, so maybe you're going to be in Australia, New Zealand for ages, or maybe you're going to be in America for ages or Europe, get a SIM card. Get a SIM card with data on and then it just means like when you're in port you can just use your data and obviously it's going to be better than the wi-fi on the ships number nine you ain't going to be buying a house after your first contract i'm sorry but like basically i was kind of led to believe that i would save so much money that i would be able to buy a house when I came back from my first contract. And I know you're thinking like, well, obviously not. I was 18, I was naive, and I wanted to believe this, as we all do. Anyway, it's safe to say, I didn't come back with enough money to buy a house, which is fine, but just know that. And the thing is, people think, you know, I'm gonna go on a cruise ship and I'm gonna be able to save so much money because I'm not gonna pay for rent, I'm not gonna pay for food, I'm not gonna pay for a car. No, you're not but there are things you are gonna pay for. You're gonna pay for internet. You're gonna pay for your nights out in the crew bar. And while the crew bar is cheap, it still adds up. Actually, you are gonna pay for food because trust me, that's where all crew members' money goes on. When you get off in port and you decide to go out for a nice lunch or dinner or whatever, you're gonna, you are gonna buy food you're gonna do it unless you're really really strict and you really want to save money um but especially if it's your first contract like you're probably not gonna save much i went on my first contract thinking i was gonna come back a baller i didn't i spent everything that i earned and i don't regret it do not regret it but nevertheless although there's a lot of things that you don't have to pay for there are a lot of things that you will have to pay for. But if you want to know more about saving money, I also have a video on that that I will link down below for you. And number 10, you will get your heart broken. You will. And whether that is the conventional way, by a girlfriend or a boyfriend, or, you know, an unconventional way, by a friend. It will happen. And. I'm sorry to say, but the reason is, is because, you know, on a ship, everything's intense. Relationships and friendships grow so incredibly fast um, that, you know, when people leave, it is absolutely heartbreaking. And like, I remember I had, I was with someone and I was like head over heels and I got transferred and oh my God, I thought my world was ending um and you know friends like you become so close to these you make such good friends and you're like yeah we're gonna stay in touch forever we're gonna like move to australia together whatever um but then actually you don't because you both finish your contract at different times probably and then if you decide to go back on ships you'll probably be on different ships and before you know it you haven't seen each other in three years and that is heartbreaking so um but it's kind of it's heartbreaking because you care so much um and especially with friends like it's worth it because you know life is all about creating relationships and great bonds you know so it's better to have loved and lost than not love at all if you have enjoyed this video guys please let me know in the comments and also hit that notification bell because in the next video i am going to be going through some really really silly questions that passengers ask crew members on a cruise ship and it's they're funny so you won't want to miss it um but while you wait for that video please check out these two videos here and i will see you next time but thank you so much for watching um, and i hope you have a fantastic day